G'day mates, Jackaro Toro here and on this channel I focus on Australian Aborigines, their languages, cultures, history eh, and so on. And in this video I would like to look at a particular word. Uh, how words for things that came with the Europeans uh, have spread between uh, different Aboriginal languages is interesting, uh, I think. A word like Gilaman for rifle is known to have spread along the east and west coasts of Australia uh, with Pidgin English. Now, in the part of Australia where I have been to study Australian Aboriginal languages, in the Pilbara region uh, in the northwest. Uh, this is supposed to be a part of the Pilbara region with the coast here, uh, the towns of Robin and Port Hedland uh, and Broome further up that way. Uh, in this area we find this word for sheep. Uh, in a number of languages. We have Ngaroma along the coast, Ngara also along the coast, uh, and three inla inland languages. Uh, and you can see that while there are some minor differences, this is clearly uh, the same word. Now, this part of Australia was opened up for colonization in the first half of the 1860s. Uh, and the first one to take up a pastoral lease in the area was Walter Padbury. Uh, Walter Padbury had been a shepherder himself as a young man uh, east of Perth. Uh, when that area had just been opened up, uh, and that would be uh, Nungar, Nungar territory. Uh, this is a dialect continuum uh, in southwesternmost uh, Australia. Yes, so in 1863, Padbury took up the De Grey lease on the De Grey River, uh, on Ngara territory. He and his brother-in-law, Charles Nairn, they sailed to Nico Bay, close to Roburn. Uh, and there he let Charles Nairn and the sheep off. Uh, and Charles Nairn brought the sheep over land uh, along the coast. So this is where sheep were first seen uh, in the area and we do know that this word uh, came from the Naroma language originally uh, and spread from there. So what does this word mean? What is its background? Well, if we look at these five languages here, where we find this word, uh, only two of them have a word Gogo, Goga, uh, Yulparija, and Karujara. Uh, this word means meat animal. However, these two languages, as well as Wanman, are all desert languages. They are inland languages. These groups were not among the first ones to encounter sheep. So they have got uh, the word later. They have encountered sheep later and got the word into their languages. So this is where the sheep made their first appearance and then they were driven up the coast here. So uh, 
this word does not come from either of these languages. So where does it come from? Well, the way I see it, and my friend and colleague Brian Gatenbeek, is that the likely culprits are either Walter Padbury or four Aboriginal men who were on the ship in 1863, who had been taken, taken out of the prison at Rottnest Island, Rottnest Island, 18 kilometers west of Fremantle. Uh, Fremantle is down by the sea, a little bit west of Perth in southwestern Western Australia. And Rottnest Island then is 18 kilometers out. So they brought along four Aboriginal men uh, that were supposed to teach shepherding to the Naras, which were enlisted as shepherders on this pastoral lease. So either this word could have come from Walter Padbury, who lived here for a few years, or from these four Aboriginal men. So if so, what is this word's history? Well, uh, Walter Padbury was a shepherd uh, as a young man on Nyungar territory, as I said. We don't know for sure what language these four Aboriginal men spoke, but if they were incarcerated on Rottnest Island, chances are that they spoke a Nyungar dialect. So Nyungar is a likely source. Uh, if anyone has access to a Nyungar dictionary and can say anything about the etymology here, feel free to write in the comments. Yes, now Walter Padbury, he actually only ended up staying for a few years up here himself. Uh, you see, in the 1860s, it was discovered the hard way that there are many dangerous reefs along the northwestern Australian coasts. Uh, in the year of 18, 1867, three ships heading south were lost and four ships going north. Walter Padbury had, in 1866, uh, had a ship built for the northern trade, uh, the Emma. In 1867, it was going down, it sailed out of Robben, or Nico Bay, uh, to go south, and was never seen or heard from again. Aboard the ship was a number of Walter Padbury's friends, uh, as well as his brother-in-law, Charles Nairn, who was going down to Perth to get married. Uh, and a grief-stricken Walter Padbury, he pulled out uh, of this area, uh, returned south, uh, and never went back. In fact, uh, we can read in his diary in the State Library of Western Australia that after this he refused to go north of Geraldton uh, ever again. Geraldton, which is a, a ways uh, further south uh, along the coast. During these few years, when Walter Padbury was here, there was a Benedictine monk, Pietro Ferrara, originally from Naples, who came and stayed and worked as a jackaroo. Uh, presumably he was looking for land for a Catholic mission, uh, but that fell through. The monks, of course, had their bosses, so to speak, in Europe, uh, and getting bosses approval in Europe took quite a long time in these days, of course when correspondence had to be sent by ships. 
Anyway, Pietro Ferrara wrote a Mara Italian word list, which was discovered in the monastery library of New Norcia. New Norcia, about 100 kilometers north of Perth, uh, by Nick Teberger. If Nick is watching, hi Nick. Yes, and uh, we can only assume that Walter Padbury helped uh, the Benedictine monks in their quest for land, for a mission, because Walter Padbury was a Catholic himself. Anyway, a, a sad story about lots of people dying uh, and a word that I would say likely comes from one of the Nyungar uh, dialects, although we cannot say with 100% certainty. Uh, if anyone would know better, or as I said, has access to a Nyungar dictionary, feel free to enlighten us uh, in the comments. This will be all for today, but I will be back. So, see you later.